We welcome you today to our video Bites of Bread here at St. John Lutheran Church in the town of Center. Today we continue our study and devotions on the commandments, and today we will look at actually two commandments, the ninth and the tenth commandment. They both talk about that word coveting. It's not a word we use often, but so let's listen to what God tells us. The ninth and tenth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. That's the ninth commandment. And the tenth commandment, very similar, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, workers, animals, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So we see that very recurring word to covet. Don't covet your neighbor's house. Don't covet your neighbor's wife and belongings. And as Luther wrote in the What Does This Mean? We'll only use the Ninth Commandments, What Does This Mean? They both are very similar. We should fear and love God that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it by a show of right, but do all we can to help him keep it. As we hear those words, we think about that word coveting. And God here in the what does this mean that Luther gives to us reminds us that God's given us possessions, all of us, our neighbors, ourselves. This word covet is, is a unique word because it's, it's a word which has almost more to do with the thought than the action. Now they kind of go hand in hand, but you think about the word coveting, to, to desire something or in your heart to want something. And, and there's not anything wrong with, with desires. It's wrong when those desires are not content. It's wrong when those desires act and, and take things that are not our own, or as it says, to take someone's property or to take someone's belongings. And that's why today, as we look at this word coveting in these commandments, we are going to use words from James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, remind us of those sins of thoughts. But each person is tempted when he is dragged away enticed by his own desires. Yes, his, his thoughts. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. It is interesting when we confess our sins in, in worship each Sunday, what do we say? I confess the sins I've committed, and the first thing we say is our thoughts, and then our words and our actions. Ninth and Tenth Commandments are, are dealing specifically with that sin of, of sinful thoughts. As James, the writer, puts down for us, those thoughts don't seem very malicious at times. Those thoughts maybe seem fairly innocent. I would like something that I don't have. And, and maybe that starts pretty small. And that's what James says. It starts as just a little thought, which then entices you and drags you away to do what? Give birth to sin. And sometimes those sins become many sins, as it says. And sometimes those many sins even lead to eternal death, because your sinful thoughts have controlled your whole heart and mind and actions. As we come to you today, we think about coveting. It, again, seems fairly simple. Don't, don't want things that you can't have or are not yours. You may covet when you look at your neighbor's possessions, that neighbor's car or house or boat. You may covet when you look at your friend's clothes or shoes that you don't have. You may covet when you watch TV and, and you just got to have whatever they tell you is on TV is something you can't live without. And as the commandments say very clearly, don't, don't covet your neighbor's possessions. Don't covet anything that is not your own. Think about in the Bible how many times people's thoughts, coveting thoughts, have led to things that are hurtful. We, we think of David, King David. He had covetous thoughts for who? His neighbor's wife, Bathsheba, right? And, and what happened? That little sinful thought led to an adultery, and it led to murder and lying and cover up all those things because of a coveting thought. We think of King Ahab, and, and he wanted that vineyard of Naboth, remember? And he wanted it because it looked so nice, and the grapes were so nice, and it wasn't his. And what did he do? He killed Naboth to get the vineyard. Now, we say, Pastor, I've, I've never had those kind of coveting desires, but have you ever had desires where maybe you acted on them to, to maybe take something that isn't yours? or to look at things with such a desire that your whole heart is, is full of wanting something that is not your own. And what does it do? It gets down to the very basics. If every good and perfect gift comes from God, and God says it does, then we are coveting things. We're saying, God, I don't think you gave me enough or the right things. That I have to act on my sinful desires because it's not something I have. And again, as we go through life, maybe it means we have to save up for, for years to get something that we need. And maybe at times we say, you know what, I'll never get that because you know what, it's not practical or it's not in my price range. And rather than covet what our neighbors have to say, I'm content. I'm content because God has given me the right things at the right time, that God has given me the, the things that I need that are important for me in my life 
and most importantly for my faith. And so the Ten Commandments, as we conclude them today, what are we reminded of again? Just like all the other commandments, this Ninth and Tenth Commandment of coveting, it's all around. It is a sin we do so simply at times and maybe not even knowing we did it, to covet something that isn't ours, to want something that we can't have. And once again, the commandment's purpose is not to get us to heaven by never coveting. And it is not to get us to heaven because we always help our neighbor to keep his property. We don't get to heaven because our thoughts are always so pure. Commandments are for what reason? Remember we said the, the SOS, to show us all our sins. And when to see our sins, to see we are not perfect. To confess our sinfulness and ask God for his forgiveness. Because we're saved by the gospel, saved by our Savior. And so the commandments today, as we kind of come to an end, next week we'll look at the conclusion to the commandments, is to remind us of sins and to remind us of God's wonderful forgiving, forgiving love of those sins. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the times that our thoughts have been filled with coveting desires, of wanting things that are not ours or things that you have not given to us. Help us to be content to serve you and others as, as we look after each other's possessions, to help and to share our possessions and to be content that you have given us everything we need at the right times. Help us to live our lives to once again see you and your forgiving love, that we have not been perfect, but you were perfect in our place. We ask this in your name. Amen. So go this week, content. Content that God has given you what you need in, in more abundance we, than we ever deserve. And help us to keep our neighbor to protect his property and to help him keep that property. Have a wonderful week.